Hi, I'm Jim Seliga. I'm a systems engineer here at QuickBits. This video will show you how to do a basic configuration of a QuickBit device. So each QuickBit radio will come from the factory with an IP address. We have a temporary sticker applied here. So we have our radio powered up through a PoE injector. And I have my laptop connected. It's set up with a, a 169.254 address in that same subnet as our radio. So I'm going to log in with the HTTPS. Always make sure you use HTTPS. And then the IP of the radio. In this case, 169.254.7.149. So we log in. Immediately we're taken to our status page. From our status page, we're going to go into the advanced menus and we're going to configure our radio to be a hub on our network. So we'll do that now. So we're going to click the wireless tab. It's going to prompt us for a default password, which is QuickBit. And we have our default settings as remote. We get an SSID of QuickBit, AirLink passcode as QuickBit Inc. So we're going to change this radio to be a root hub. Now the root hub will be the top of your spanning tree topology. And we'll get into details of that a little later. Uh, we have the options to change channels but any default remote will scan all channels looking for you know, a particular SSID it is configured for. We'll submit these changes, and we see here that we have uh, a new remote connected. We have our signal quality of 100, we have RSSI of minus 58, and we have our connection time. All right, now that we have our wireless link, we're gonna step through the web user interface I'll go through the information on the status page. And of course we have the radio, device model, our Ethernet Mac address, and other information about the software and the current connection time. Uh, the wireless information regarding the channel and its role as a hub or a root hub, SSSID. We have a list, a table of radio peers. So that'll show up with all your radios and point to multi-point. We also have the LAN interface status. We have our three interfaces, and you can see we have our speed and duplex settings. Uh, and finally, the management interface is shown with our IP address and subnet mask and default gateway. We'll continue on to the admin tab. And here we have our control features such as reboot, factory reset. You can upgrade the firmware. Uh, you can change the password. And we have another feature called locate unit. Now this is to help somebody who's in the field, needs help identifying which radio you're communicating with. We also have the configuration settings. You can enter in user fields such as location and descriptions, and you have the ability to turn the LED on and off. So next we'll go over to the LAN tab. And here, very simple, we have uh, the ability to shut PoE on and off. We can adjust our speed and duplex settings, and we can enable and disable the Ethernet ports. So next, we're going to navigate back to the wireless tab. We'll briefly go through these settings. So in our device role settings, we have basic hub and remote settings, and we also have spanning tree hub and remotes. So if you have a redundant system, you want to use a root hub as your main radio on the top of your spanning tree topology, and you want to have remotes that seek routes so that there was a break in your network, it would always find a path to that route. So once you choose your options, if you're using spanning tree or not, you can set up your SSID to whichever SSID phrase you want to use, your passcode as well. Uh, center frequency, pretty explanatory. You get three channels. The preferred hub field is a setting for remotes where you could specify which hub you want your remote to link with. Uh, it comes in handy when there's multiple hubs in the field and within line of sight of multiple hubs and you have a desired path that you want it to take. You do the same feature with the link lock. So from the hub side, you can link that remote to your particular hub. Uh, and the other feature is a link bump. You can bump that remote so that it will go out and seek an additional hub that's within range of that remote. Okay, and finally, we're gonna go through the network tab. 
to give an overview of this settings. So we have our three methods for IP assignment. We have the default auto setting. This is using multicast DNS. It advertises its abbreviated MAC and the IP from factory using LLDP. It will negotiate with a link local subnet and establish communication on that protocol. Uh, static, pretty self-explanatory. Enter in your static settings. Dynamic is your DHCP, so very simple. Your network should have a DHCP server. You can expect to get an IP address that way. Uh, next section is the VLAN section. And we can turn on or off VLAN settings. We have port-based. We can just strictly use management only, or we can switch over to port-based VLANs where we can set each port on the radio as an axis or trunk. An axis VLAN, you can set your VLAN tag accordingly. We also have uh, the settings for spanning tree. You can turn that on and off. And uh, we have SNMP settings. You can use SNMP 1 version 1 or SNMP version 2. You can make the changes to community and uh, your notification ports accordingly. And uh, finally, we have a couple features for DNS servers and NTP servers. So that was a walkthrough of the QuickBit web user interface. Next, I'd like to show you using SSH to log in and manage the radio. So we have a simple terminal session on the laptop, we'll SSH into the IP. So here we'll have a, a password prompt. Username password is QuickBit, QuickBit. So here at the prompt, you type question mark, you get a list of uh, informational commands, same as the web UI. Uh, we can go into the control section with the control commands. Again, we'll do a question mark. We'll see a list of all the control commands here. And again, it's very similar, same commands you see in the uh, web UI. So that was a walkthrough of a basic configuration of a QuickBit device.